ways you could help yourself. And she also wants to talk about how to connect with your spirituality. So today I'm going to leave the plate to Jill, Juniper and let her explain exactly what she's going to help you in the future do to better yourself. Oh my goodness. Well, since we're leading with that, I would like to start with first thing in the morning, whatever your schedule is, if you work first, second or third shifts, you know, we know everybody works different things, different things going on in their lives. But from the time you're re you've rested and you wake up, get up and whatever hand. So if you're right handed, brush your teeth with your left hand. Here's why <laughs> you are seriously, you are invoking your subconsciousness into your conscious immediately when you begin your day, brush your teeth. Now I do it still. And it's hilarious because I drool. <laughs> I mean, seriously, there's something about using my left hand because I'm right-handed that you know, it'll make you drool, but it, it's a game changer. It fires both your other half of your brain and right. you're bringing your subconscious into your consciousness and you're letting your body know, uh Oh, wow. You know, it's like a jolt of a steroid, but you're giving it to yourself. No one else can do that for you. So right. it's just a fun way to do that and get your day started and then get in the shower. And, you know, if you work out or whatever you do, but I would always suggest enhance your breathing, like mm -hmm. feel your lungs one way or another. One of the things I like to do is I have a little trampoline. <laughs> Literally, I have this little trampoline that's, you know, that small size, just big enough for one person. And yeah. I get on that and I just jump, 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 jump. And there's something about it that also feels like a little girl. <laughs> you know, it's like the, uh, my, when I was a little girl, I loved jumping on the bed. And that's right. what I think of when I'm jumping on that trampoline. But I'm feeling my lungs. And it's really good for us because we're firing our system and we're circulating the blood literally from the top of our head and our hair. <laughs> all mm -hmm. the way down to the soles of our feet. So we're really firing. So even if, uh, if you can't work out or you have physical things where you can't, if you can sit in a chair and, <gasps> you know, and like over exaggerate mm -hmm. your breathing, <gasps> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you yeah. Feel your lungs. Not only will it help fight viruses and keep you feeling good, but it will help accelerate your day and get you going where your brain fires very differently because number one, so, and then, so we're doing one, two, threes. I do one, two, threes. So number mm -hmm. one, brush your teeth with the opposite hand. <laughs> <laughs> we're invoking your subconsciousness. We're bringing it into your, your physical conscious day. Second thing is, bring in like fire your breathing because it your air circulates your blood flow and gets everything going if you can't you know move around and walk if you can't right. run or jog or whatever work out you can walk or just sit in a chair and do it right but it's the same thing and then you can kick your feet you know <laughs> but it's really you know it's like being thinking outside the box you know Right. And then the third thing is look, go to the mirror and look yourself in the mirror mm -hmm. and say to yourself, I love you. I, and look yourself right in the eyes and say, I love you seven times looking yourself in the eyes and say it differently. I love you. I love you. I love you. It's like you're shifting and, the, and in, interestingly shift your voice. You know, where you're kind of playing yes. with your voice, because what you're doing is the tones. I'm a megahertz person. If you mm -hmm. are too, it's really powerful. Yes. But it's something you're doing for yourself. No one can do these things for you, but you. Yes. So it's for you, to you, about you. <laughs> 
So it's really, <laughs> you know, with you, you know, and yes. only. So it's a beautiful thing. And what happens is with the different tones that you're using, what you're hearing is that um, I'm trying to explain it in a way uh, that everybody will understand. Tones and vibrations have, have an energy. They have mm -hmm. a vibrational energy. And what's amazing to me is that because I have done these things mm -hmm. and and I do a lot of different things that are really interesting, but I just do them for myself. I, they work for me, but right. these three things work for everyone, yes. literally everyone. And if you are shifting your voice, you know, you know why when you're talking, just like when you're talking to a child and you, you say, hi, sweetheart, and you yes. lighten your voice. Or you're speaking to your little dog. Hi, baby. Did you have a good day today? You know, that baby talk or that conversation, those flexions and inflections of the voice and the tone shifts are invoking your inner child experience. So what you're really doing is in those three steps, you are pulling in <laughs> your subconsciousness. You yeah. are increasing your blood flow mm -hmm. and from head to toe, and you are invoking the energetic vibrations that pulls your inner child in because you are telling yourself, I love you. And it's such a beautiful thing. It's like, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> And seven times, so anything you do seven times, it will change your life. It will literally, in, it, I'm telling you, every day it will change your life. You will have a different day every day, but better than the day before. I know right. that sounds crazy, but it's so true. Mm -hmm. And you can monitor it. I actually encourage people to monitor every 30 days, like, write down I journal right. everything I journal or record everything so yes. it's really important but it changes it will change the lives of everyone that does it it's really remarkable yeah and it's now, fun it sounds like fun and I and I definitely believe that it works because when you're doing that over and over again mm -hmm. you're convincing yourself you're taking that self-doubt and you're throwing it out the window you are now, you, you are, because when, when you start to say things over and over and over again, mm -hmm. you believe it. Just like if someone negatively says something to somebody, after a while, they start believing it. Well, it's vice versa. Now, yeah. instead of saying negative things, you're saying positive things and it's coming from you. And then eventually you're going to start believing it. I like that strategy a lot. I yeah. really do. And to your point, what that actually does long-term Mm -hmm. you got it before because not everybody will it, it will take them a little while but what happens is you're literally beginning you're removing by the unconditional love that you're giving to yourself you're not expecting it from someone else see right. love is like a dollar bill mm -hmm. you have to have the dollar bill to get four quarters <laughs> or mm -hmm. ten dimes or a combination of nickels, dimes, and, you know, quarters, or, yeah. you know, whatever, or buying something or sharing it, you have to possess it. So yes. people that cannot give love mm -hmm. are people that do not possess inner love for the self. Therefore, they cannot share something they don't possess. Right. So, they want to bring people down to their level. So they say mean and hurtful things, sometimes mm -hmm. subconsciously, sometimes intentionally. But in either case, by saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. <laughs> yeah. And you can laugh and giggle and have some fun with it. You know why? Because the more fun you have with it, every time you say it, you are taking all those voices in your head that give you negative terrible things that they're saying and making you feel right 
You're removing those negative voices in your head and replacing them with your own empowerment, which raises your foundation of every part of you, which is oh, your yeah. your character of inner child of the for the inner child building, and that is your self esteem, your self worth, your self confidence, your self awareness, and yeah. you'll start you'll start becoming a lot more aware of not only yourself, but as you become more aware of yourself, you become more aware of everything else around you, the other people, everything. I mean, you begin to feel and experience unique, amazing things. Yeah, I know. And I, I think that's so effective. And I, I like that strategy. And now when it comes to stress, you know, in this day and age, especially, we live in a go-go society and, and it's, I feel like it's a lot harder nowadays and life has changed so much, especially since after COVID, a lot of people were stressed being stuck in their houses. And when they came out, life changed. The way we function changed. People were in financial crisis. So many things have caused stress in their lives and over 70% of illnesses are caused by stress. And I don't think people are aware of that. And stress can destroy a person mentally, physically, spiritually. And I would love to hear some of the tips that you have to help people cope with stress, because I think it's something so prevalent in our society and people just don't know how to get rid of it or reduce it. And I think it's so important that we provide them with the tools to reduce the stress in their lives. But, so they can um, Most people experience uh, anxiety and stress. And so what happens is anxiety and stress is an extension, is a symptom. It is a symptom of unaddressed emotional trauma that leads to overthinking that has not been resolved that can then lead to physical bodily issues that i mean people that are that turn bitter angry that are bitter and angry literally are more prone to get cancer than people who are not and right. it's simply because the body, parts of the body will begin to shut down. And what we know, what I have traveled the world for the last seven, eight years now, healing and really studying the body, the human body about stress, anxiety, mental health, all of that. What happens with um, stress is stress is caused literally from overthinking it yes. is it's a self-induced symptom but it is caused from overthinking and we overthink when we feel helpless so you know overthinking comes from oh I should have handled that better I should have done that better I should have you know what that's yesterday yes so everything that I happened yesterday for me and I tell everyone yesterday's gone matter of fact the second last minute the minute i just said that's gone right this, right now is present everything is changing and shifting every second yes. everything that is in the past is the past our right that is the beginning to our future so how we think about that is really important so yeah. if everybody begins their day and their experience, whatever's going on and say, okay, I don't like this situation. I'm feeling anxious. I'm, I'm having some emotional, you know, crises, you know, I'm, I'm depressed. I'm, you know, I mean, people, what happens is when Things are not addressed within a person when their right. child is out of balance, their chakras are out of balance, their emotions are not balanced. Right. Because they, people get in their head. What happens is when you are in your head, you're decapitating yourself. 
Right. And what that means is you're cutting off the flow to the rest of your body. Mm -hmm. So I'm explaining this and then I'll give some exercises that really help. Oh, sure. Yes. I call it, um, I call it, uh, it's actual uh, decapitation because what you're doing, you're not flowing. You're not, you're really, you're cutting off the, the energy flow to the rest of your body because you're in your head. When you're thinking, you can't be thankful. Yes. And you can't, when you're thinking, you can't be at peace. Right. Peace is not does not come from thinking and overthinking trauma and stress and anxiety and and it elevates from there into conditions such as bipolar and you yeah. know you know addictions and all major things because people are trying to escape the overthinking so yes. we'll, I'm going to give you some ways to stop it here in a second but so what happens is when you are overthinking decapitating your flow you you just completely you are cutting the head off the snake but the right. problem is you're not you're not doing it properly you you are mm-hmm. in your head you're not flowing so when you cut your head if you cut the head off of a snake its body automatically knows what to do right our bodies would be led by our heart you see yes. mm-hmm. so what happens is when we address if something comes up and bothers us like i used to internalize because we all by nature internalize things that are going on we we take it personally we really hold it close you know to our chest yeah. but i have found and know that through experience and education and coaching is that when you are addressing those issues and talking about them and you're allowing your 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 blood to flow (laughs) and you know and i'll come to some ways in a minute but what happens is when you're flowing your mind and your heart Mm -hmm. And your inner child are communicating. But when you're thinking, you're cutting off your throat. You're cutting yourself off at your throat chakra. And you're blocking your throat chakra. And what happens is because you stop talking. You're not talking about what's bothering you. And so you're you're just really choking yourself. I know it sounds awful. So it it sounds as awful as it is. So yeah. what happens is when it's not addressed, it turns into physical issues, which yes. is what happened to me. It really happened to me. And I understand it very clearly. I mean, yeah. I, was, you know, uh, it is what it is. I mean, I was in a terrible marriage and I was, you know, verbally traumatized on a daily basis for long, for years. And it yeah. was a really tough situation. And when you have someone saying really mean things to you and, and your loved ones or someone that mistreats you or cheats on you or lies, I mean, lies, cheaters and thieves, you know, Mm -hmm. they lie to themselves about, you know, who, what's really happening with them. They deny, you know, what's really going on. Therefore, yes. you know, so they cheat themselves out of emotional intimacy. So they're cheating the people that love them out of emotional intimacy. And then they lie to themselves about, <laughs> about being open, vulnerable, and intimate. Yes. They cheat everyone that loves them in their life out of yes. openness, intimacy, and vulnerability. Mm-hmm. And that's tough because yeah. it affects it affects people in very different ways, and it manifests mm-hmm. in symptoms, right? Yes. So one of the ways to begin with, when you begin your day, the way I said, you're firing your whole body. That's yes. why you know we we want to move the body. 
when you are thinking anyone, so let's talk about anxiety first. Let's talk about Mm -hmm. stress, anxiety, worrying, and fear. Okay. Let's address those. Now we know that these are, I mean, in today's world, (laughs) there is a stigma, which is ridiculous. I don't like labels and I don't like stigmas, but there is, you know, if you have stress or anxiety, you have a mental illness, you have a mental health issue. Right. And that's because you, you automatically go to your head and that's because it's how God made us. It's how our bodies, our nervous systems, we are very sensitive. So Mm -hmm. one of the things we can do is the first thing that I always do, I take time out. I take time out for me every day. So Mm -hmm. if you're in a busy day and you have a lot of people, for example, caregivers, uh, nurses, mothers, fathers, um, employees, business owners, literally any and everyone, students, (laughs) you know, you know, and children, you know, Uh, all of these experiences that are happening and all of the ages of everyone, they're having different experiences, but all of these things have different levels of anxiety, fear, and stress. So one of the things that I always suggest is you have to do something, get your mind off of it. There are ways that laughter, you can't heal if you can't laugh, right? Take yourself out. I, I go out and take myself on dates. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I will. I will get up if I'm somewhere and and there's something going on that doesn't. I'm having a conversation with someone that doesn't feel good. Yeah. What I will do is is you know and it's it. Let's say it's confrontational because there are some conversations that have to be had, but yeah. you know and there are safe words. I would say when conversations have they have to be talked about. You have to talk to someone. If something's bothering you in a relationship at Mm -hmm. work, um, with your children, talk to other mothers. If it's about your children, you know, talk to their teachers, talk to other people that can help with the situation so that you're not carrying it all alone. You are not an Island. You, yes. you know, there is no I in team and it literally, exactly. we're all part of a big, a bigger team here. Yeah. And so if we're talking about it, we're getting it out and that helps it, that helps keep it from really expanding in our mind. And then right. there's so many things that if there's something, one of the things that I always suggest is on YouTube, there are so many videos and I'm actually beginning to make them myself is that for some proven ways that I use, uh, sound megahertz music and, uh, meditation. So I just tell them lay, get in a comfortable place. It could be a bathtub, take a pink Himalayan salt bath. Excellent idea. You know, with Epsom salt, at the end, you know, the, the go in there and tell them. Sh- if you have children, say, "Listen, I'm taking a mommy time out." When I tell my youngest daughter that, she said she was uh, four because I was going to take a, a time out, and she was very articulate. And she said, "What did you do wrong, mommy?" <laughs> I said, "You don't have to do something wrong to need a time out. We all need a time out." We all have to get out of everyone else's energy. We cannot recharge our own batteries and be everything to everyone if we're exactly. not everything to ourselves first. So 100%. we have to shut the noise. So I always, I take a bath. I, and I will just lean back and relax and just, I, I, I use, um, uh, Dr. Teal's, you know, they, they're scented, you know, and it yes. makes a bubble bath. <laughs> That's the you ones know, I use. It's amazing. And I love it. And uh, I will put on a music. And sometimes it's interesting because you don't have to necessarily look for the megahertz. 
But what I do is I will go in and I will look for an intention instead. So go mm -hmm. in and start looking for an intention. So if it's an I am. So anytime pe most people don't know this, but anytime you say I am, you are invoking your subconsciousness into your conversation. And it's it's like saying, Juniper, hello. <laughs> when mm -hmm. you say I am, yeah. Every every cell in your body is at your disposal and has your attention. And when you're doing things such as a bath or laying down, get yourself in a comfortable position and just put in some earbuds or, yeah. some, you know, listen to listen. You can't listen to music. Stop listening to music. I never, I always suggest it. If you're listening to music that has nasty four letter bad words that yes. that talks about cheating lying and stealing then you're adding to your anxiety because what's happening is you're feeding i call it you're feeding yourself negative fruit because yes. what you're doing is you're playing it in your head even with no one around so right. cut all that off and go to something that has an intention and you can go on YouTube and find them. And what they do is you can find something that says healing or relaxing music or, or meditative music and just lean back and just relax. I mean, and start looking for artists that feed your soul. Yes. You know, they may not be on the radio, but guess what? They're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And there are so many artists out there that are up and coming that are amazing. And there's so many Christian artists and, and great artists out there that I yeah. listen to their music all the time. And it's like, I will, I will work out to Kane Brown and <laughs> all kinds of great artists like that, just because, you know, yeah. it's, it's really interesting, but I have found that I, I love music that doesn't have words with it better. You know, when yeah. I'm in that state and shutting out yes. the voice, I just want to hear, I will listen to classical piano or right. peaceful piano music because there's no sounds, there's no tones of anyone's voice. And mm -hmm. it just, it calms the nervous system almost yes. immediately. So that is one of the things I use to help. And then um, one of the things, if you're overthinking, mm -hmm. what I always do is if you're overthinking and you are, you can't accomplish. So one of the things that people come to me for coaching is Juniper, I cannot, I, I, I don't know, I, ADD, you know, a lot of them that uh, almost literally, everyone has some level of what they call ADD, but right. we're meant to, God made us that way because mm -hmm. so we can process multiple things and do multiple yes. things and learn multiple things. Yes. But when we are overdosed on anxiety and negativity, when we're overdosed on negativity, <laughs> yes. we, we, fill our cells with anxiety because mm -hmm. what people don't realize is our cells, every cell in our body absorbs everything around us. Yes. It's literally our skin breathes. We're vibrational beings. Everything breathes, expands and contracts just like, you know, I mean, just yes. like a, a, we're all energy caterpillars. We are, you know, we see them, you know, it's like the breathing, you know, but it's really a powerful thing. So when we are, and every, no matter where we go and what we do, there are things that we're going to be exposed to negative energy, no matter what. We can't help that. Right. But what we can do is minimize its impact on us. Yes. You know, and, and there are things that we can do to do that. And one of those is being very mindful, being self-aware of what feels good to you and what 
doesn't feel good to you be is the beginning of saying, okay, I may have to limit. Here's an example. I had a girlfriend. I'm sure we've all, all of us ladies have had friends that we go to lunch with and hang out with and love. Yeah. Man, by the end of that lunch, whew, I, <laughs> I'm feeling like I, I am, I am, I'm spent. I need to go home and just, I need to recharge my own batteries. Yeah. Because that person pulled it from me. What I learned was about my own self-preservation and protection of my own high vibrational energy was that all of these low vibrational people are going to want to spend all your time. They're going to take all your time, energy, and effort. If they could, they will. And they will absolutely. And that's, they'll abuse their right to be there. You know, right. Yeah. If we don't say no, we have to learn. My mother used to say, you got to learn to say no, baby. <laughs> and you know, I had to become an adult and a, and have an empty nest to realize what that really what she was really saying there, you know, to the fullest extent of that. But yeah. by limiting access to us with people that are negative really protects us and then giving ourselves time to cleanse that energy that we collected yeah. from them, you right. know, yeah. for the shower. You know, literally you could take a shower and help cleanse it. But if you wear the same clothes, and you were around someone, someone negative, and you went home to your dogs, that negative energy falls off you and lands on your floor. And mm -hmm. negative energy is really uh, falls between your feet and your knees on the floor. Yeah. Literally, you can't mm -hmm. see it, but it's there. Right. So every time you kick it and walk around. So another thing you can do if you know you have to have a, a stressful conversation, but it's necessary to get to the next step so that you can either make a decision about remaining in that friendship or relationship or business arrangement or whatever, yeah. right? right. Or, mm -hmm. You know, whatever the situation is or keep that service, you know, because yes. we all use services and we pick up the phone because something's not right. Yeah. I always suggest when you know that's going to happen, take a walk on the phone. So if you're mm -hmm. talking on the phone to someone that you know, or you feel could be negative or begins right. to be negative, take a walk, start exactly. walking because mother earth is your, she is her purpose is to ground us. That's yes. what she does for us. That's one of her purposes is that, and what happens is what comes in your leaves out your feet. So yes. you're not, you're not going to feel that conversation when it's done. Right. And then one of the things for overthinking is that, I mean, there's so many, but one of the things I do is I use reward system. <laughs> and it's really funny because we are wired to, we work and earn something and then we get a reward. That's our paycheck, right. a payday, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, and things like that. So, or we take vacations, we feel we earned that. So we go, yes. right? So uh -huh. I do something right the opposite. So if I'm overthinking something and I, because I am a, I do process and I'm always thinking 20 steps ahead, but I'm considering who I was going to be affected my, by, by my decision. See, right. So what's that rico ricochet effect going to be? Instead of what's my instant gratification? So right. the most people are thinking instant gratification and there's people who think all oh, everything in the middle. Yes. So it doesn't matter on which stage you are. Instant gratification of do I do it or not? Right, <laughs> or, right, right. You know, I always ask, I'm like, okay, if someone asks you to do something, one of the things that's fun, I'll go, do you smell that? Mm -hmm. And the reason you do that is the universe, what you're doing is you're invoking the universal order of protection. Right. And your nose is the one, is the thing that scent is the one thing that your brain, your hippocampus and 
the parts of your brain that are repeating the cycles of the process over processing. Mm -hmm. What happens when you do that is it stops it. Right. Instantly. Mm -hmm. It's really a powerful thing. So I reward. So what I do is I'll go in and I love payday, you know, yes. like, you know, the little, I get the little ones in a big bag or whatever, you know, a mm -hmm. pound, whatever bag it is. So, or I will, if I know there's something I need to do and I'm like, oh, I really don't want to do that. You know, <laughs> like, like I do not, I do not love folding clothes. I never have. I don't know. I just don't. I don't know. I anyone. hate it. <laughs> I don't love it. I mean, but there's people that love it. It's like therapeutic for them. And I'm like, yes. no, I'm thinking of all the things I need to, I want to do, but not that, you know? Right. So exactly. It's really interesting. So what I do is I will, and it's really crazy, but I will put on my phone. I will pick something that, that I, so I do, I learned the silver method. So right. I go back and I will play things that I'm like, I want to, I want to listen to that. Or I, I will listen to something that, that is for me, something yes. I love doing, but right. the reward, like the other day, I like this, this show called bull, you know, B U L L. <laughs> oh, I like that show too. I love that show. And I just like that guy. I followed him. There's something. See, here's the thing that there's something in the tones of a person's voice. Mm -hmm. You either want to hear it and listen right. to it, or you don't. Exactly. Exactly. It, instantly, there is a, an attraction to the vibration, the vibrational energy of the tone in someone's voice. A hundred percent. It's a powerful thing. It's why we choose to watch and do the things we do. And I yes. like him for that reason, because he gets me out of my head. I know that's yeah. really crazy, but the other night, and I don't even watch TV, but the right. other night, I, I'm in the process of downsizing. Mm -hmm. So my home, and I'm going to sell everything I have so I can travel the world in a, in a motor home for the next 12 months. So I was washing a bunch of things. And I mean, it was stacked up pretty high. <laughs> you know, it was towels. I mean, and during the moving process, so, you right. know, you don't know what got clean, you know, so I was washing all those things and, and I thought, Oh my gosh, I dreaded folding everything. Yeah. And putting it away. I was like, Oh, you know, <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to reward myself. So I went in and I turned on one of the, one of the bull shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I ended up watching two of them, but what it did was it, it took me, it rewarded me. And here's what happens when you do this. It's right. The reversal of what you think, because we're wired to earn a reward before we get it. When we reward ourselves, our brain automatically kicks in and starts really working hard for us to earn the reward that it just got. Right. It's really amazing what happens. And you can do it with little bitty things. Like I found like, these are little bitty pieces of joy, like that are really not bad for you. Like sometimes when I'm thinking about like, I'm in the middle of a project and it's taken me, you know, I'm really processing and I'm thinking, oh my, because there was a time I couldn't sit still at a computer and work for more than 15 minutes at a time. Right. My ADD was so significant. So I, I learned how mm -hmm. to manage my condition because I right. didn't want to be on medication. I, right. it was, it made me lose weight. It made me stop eating. It, it, there were things that it, I had some really significant side effects and yeah. every medication has a side effect and oh, my yeah. body doesn't like it. My body likes holistic care, period. Yeah. Yes. You know, our bodies love to heal themselves. God created us to, we can heal ourselves. We really yes. can. 
if we treat it, if we treat ourselves right, we can. Right. And so uh, it was a really powerful thing. So <laughs> I'll go in there when I'm working on something and it's, you know, again, it's a longer project and I'll go in there and I'll be like, it's payday time. <laughs> <laughs> so I will go in there and not only does it serve as a treat, but it serves as it's payday, you know? Yes, so yes. I'm doing this for a payday. I'm doing this for because it brings me peace, love, and joy. And yeah. peace, love, and joy to other people. And it takes care of them and it takes care of me. And you know, it's just beautiful. And yeah. it's, it's an amazing thing. So there are certain ways and you can play with your play with yourself. I mean, in a way, it's like you're really invoking your inner child when you're creating right. playful ways to get yourself out of your head, you know, yes. and to do silly things. Watch a comedian, you know, that doesn't have foul language, you know, right. I just, like I just don't like foul language because it's so low vibrational. And people who use foul language are people that, well, they don't, they don't practice self-love and right. self-care. And that is a fact. I know yes. it to be a fact. And, you know, it's like, if the, it's okay for them. I have friends that, you know, use language. They just don't use it around me. Right. And, you know, it's like they're honoring you know, yes. they're they're those of us that, absolutely. And it's really a, crucial that we surround ourselves. So ways to help that is limit uh, the take, take access of the people that we surround ourselves with. Right. And, and check, check, check and tap, tap, check, check, yes. and make sure you're double checking everything and, and that Every 10 or 15 minutes, check with yourself. Mm -hmm. hey, Jennifer, how are we feeling? We still good over here? Yes, we yeah. are. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, Lizzie, how are you doing over there? You right. Know, it's like you're checking and it's it's a check check with yourself. And when it's good, it's like you're tap tapping it in. And yes. this is what we do. And I physically do that. I literally walk around and I'm talking to God. I'm talking to all beings of love and light. Yes. And I will, you'll see me tap, tap my chest and, you know, because I'm, I'm taking it in. I'm really yeah. it like a sponge. So there's just some really fun ways that we can like, and do some fun stuff, go in your closet and say, you know what? Okay. Inner child, what do we want to wear today? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I let my inner child dress me every day. And I, it's, have you ever seen children? come out and they've got one one sock that's different than the other and you know all of the crazy yeah I, I do that at home for myself I mean I, <laughs> I love the ball the Tennessee volunteers I'm a huge basketball fan football is my second but you know I love the basketball and it's like I have friends coming over and I'll have on a booty sock and a sock that comes to my name. <laughs> now, this one I wanted to wear, but I wanted to wear them both. But it's just, it's fun stuff that we do every day that we can, we can tweak it. There is no yeah. set requirement on anything. Right. You don't have to do, you know, it's like just firing your brain in different ways. Like mm -hmm. if you're listening to, I, I will sit and I do three things every day for my mind every day religiously i spend 90 minutes focused on writing creatively either writing my music or writing books right or, uh writing something you know uh n doing my meditations different things i spend 90 minutes different times of the day so 90 right. minutes and then i stop and then i invoke I spend 90 minutes meditating, you know, mm. or 90 minutes, you know, you can go for a walk for 90 minutes, right? Just shut it down, shut down yes. all the noise and just go in nature and just sit and have a picnic by yourself. Whatever 100%. it is, doesn't matter. And then 
to fire, you know, because you're what you've got is you've got left brain, right brain, amygdala. Mm -hmm. And the thing that happens when with people that meditate, they can actually grow their amygdala. If you look, you can see CAT scans or MRIs. Someone who meditates regularly will have a uh, amygdala twice the size of someone who doesn't. Right. It's a part of the brain that can actually grow. And when you're firing the amygdala, the amygdala connects to the nervous system, which has everything to do with anxiety. It's this, it's not the situation. So here's an example. I had someone call me the other day and they had a tear. They don't like the. She doesn't like her job. Friend of mine. She doesn't like her job. Mm -hmm. She's, um, she feels stifled in her situation. Right. I understand that. So, so, uh, but she has to work, right. you know, to make money. And she said, I'm really looking for something different. And, but she was four months. She was just complaining about it. Finally, she called me and she said, I put in for a job I really want. And I said, tell me about it. So she told me all about it. And I said, now, how does that feel? And she said, it feels really good. It's really interesting because the the situation didn't change. Yeah. But her mindset changed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, she feels better. You see? Yes. Mm -hmm. Our circumstances, here's the thing that we're either raising our vibration. Our circumstances, everything out here is going to stay the same. It's right. us that changes. We are the things that we are what is changing. Like if I stand up, I'll go down. See what right. I mean? So, yes. so low vibrations. So I want to say this because I think it's really important for people to understand. If you go into a restaurant, we've all had this experience happen. You go into a restaurant and they weave you through the people. And yes. you go through these pockets that are super, it's like, wow, it's hot in here, right? Yeah. It's oh, hot. Yeah. And then you go and finally, thank goodness, they seat you in this really cool spot that feels the air is cool and crisp and mm -hmm. and clear. It's like, oh my goodness, it's like heaven, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, the difference is negative energy is dark dense and hot right so that's why when you go in a crowd not only is it body heat that heats it up but negative energy that's why you feel pockets of heat in certain places and yeah. those people have a tendency to connect there right They'll over there and chit chat while people who are higher vibrational that are living in the cool air <laughs> Mm -hmm. In the clear, crisp mountain there, um, it's a cooler location there over there talking to those people. So it's really, there There are interesting things that we can notice. Yeah. And I'm giving you a lot of opportunities because everybody's mind, everybody's mm -hmm. processing is yes. different. Their, right. their adaptability timeframes are different. So yes. what I'm trying to do is give broad opportunities for people to kind of process what I'm saying so they can decide some things that they want to try that are really fun. I mean, yeah. it turned out to be really fun. When I first started my journey, I literally had no joy. I had no joy. I was so beat down emotionally be down that um when I was it was it was strange I I tell you I was the poster child of anxiety and restlessness and right. overthinking I was and now mm -hmm. I'm the poster child of peace unconditional love and joy <laughs> you know That's but it's really I and I understand 
the mindset so you know powerfully but you know the body is so we're so complex yet we're mm -hmm. so simple just mm -hmm. some very simple things really yes. will shift the paradigm completely and yes. put in a new elevation track you know and it it's it's the decision you know we have to get out of the limbo and that means we cannot trust other people telling us who we are and what's right for us right that, that is the biggest and number one reason that people have anxiety yes and stress is that they are being told by other people. We are told our entire lives from the time we're born how to act, what to do, what to wear, where we can go, how, yes. you know, everything we can do. And even when we get married and have children of our own, we're still in that situation because yes. we're trying to be thoughtful of how they you know, all uh, of everyone involved, you know, yeah. and, and uh, being present in our, our family's lives. But listen, that invisible line doesn't happen overnight. Right. It happens over time. And it's like trickling over a year. Yeah. You mm -hmm. up one day and you say, wait a minute. This, no, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. And that invisible line happens when and only when, <laughs> and this is hard to say for, for people because this is what happened to me anyway. And it happens to, this is how it happens for a lot of people that come to me, Right. but it doesn't happen to everyone, but it is a very common situation. My situation, my <laughs> changing the fear of changing. Yes. Where I was, the fear and the anxiety and the extent of the trauma that I was dealing with was so, had to get so bad that the idea of change was a relief. Right. Know what I mean? And oh, 100%. Literally, because change is scary for everyone it yeah. really is and it's work it's it takes time effort and energy but you know what it takes a whole lot more time energy and effort to tolerate people that do not treat us properly that do not honor our healthy boundaries and limitations yeah as we are building them within ourselves and around us we right. teach people how to treat us by what we allow people mm -hmm. to do. See? Yes. And these things, when we're allowing other people to tell us who we are and right. really, you know, put, if when we give them more authority over us than us, that's when anxiety and and fears and frustrations and anger and sadness and resentment when you stay in those situations it always turns to resentment and bitterness oh, you know yeah. and then it gets worse before it gets better and my mistake was not realizing it was affecting my kids my beautiful daughters and when I realized it was, I was out of there and mm -hmm. I would never do that again. I mean, I wouldn't, but we have to really take note of what's being said to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have clients that come to me and they'll, they'll use words like, I'm so stupid. What? Excuse yeah. me? What? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Apologize to yourself right now. Yeah. You know, because they said, I said, no, absolutely not. I said, you need to apologize for that. And they'll say, I'm sorry. And I said, 
you need to say I'm sorry to yourself. If right. someone else said that to you, would you accept it? Would you accept your brother, sister, mother, father, sibling, best friend, spouse, or children, lover, anyone to say that to you? Would you? Right. But you'll, you know, so we have to really take note and take responsibility for what we allow yes. to happen and start paying be, by being present and pay attention to how we feel mm -hmm. through self-awareness. Because when something doesn't feel right, so you see, we can't see intentions, but we can feel them. Right. We can mm -hmm. feel an intention, but until they act on that intention, they can't be like, you know, no one goes to jail for he thought about robbing someone, right? Yeah. He, you know, he just thought about it. But luckily, someone at the bank or someone, they they felt it and, you know, security was called or whatever. But you know what I mean? But yeah. in both cases, the reality is, you know, we're really looking at how we allow through our self-awareness and how we grew up has a lot to do with how much we allow yes. to happen in our life. Mm -hmm. And I grew up with someone just like the man I married. And I know, yeah. and I know that it was because I had this childhood trauma and my intention was to never marry someone like that. But my, my intention was one thing, but my fear was so much bigger than my intention. And I, I say, I, my intention must have been the size of a grape, you <laughs> know, where my, you know, or a, a cantaloupe where my fear was the size of a watermelon. Right. Because I attracted that because what we have a responsibility to ourselves to do is to is to become aware of what feels right, is right, and know it. Don't think it, but knowing. Yeah. You, know, you can think, but when right. you know, you can act. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. And, you know, and I always say, if you're thinking, you can't be thankful. And one of the things that I say as a gratitude for people who, you know, that I know are overthinking in their life. Yeah. I share is, is I give them, I give them a gratitude or affirmation is I'm not thinking I'm thankful. You yeah. see? And oh, it yeah. helps the mind stop and it helps that person. And some people say it, you know, 50, hundred times a day because oh, yeah. when thought comes into your head, Oh, and here's something that I use too. When someone has reoccurring or they have so much, they're surrounded by people that mistreat them. We've yeah. all had people like that in our lives. And there's some type of, even if it's an unintended, it's abuse, you know, it's still, if it traumatizes you, it's. Oh, yeah. It's abuse, you know, oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's trauma. It's, it had you, you have to view it and fix it and, yeah. and talk about it. So when we're dealing with these situations, one of the things I always say to people is, is that besides the, you know, the gratitude, I'm not thinking I'm thankful is that when we're in a situation where where our mind, our hippocampus is rolling over yeah. things that someone said that made you feel bad right? or, or a, a relationship that went wrong and, you know, they keep calling and texting and leaving all these horrible things. Yeah. And it's just adding to your stress. Sometimes you just got to block those people. If, if you're getting that, you got to turn it off. It's like a radio station. 
off. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I mean, you can't listen to it because when you listen to it, what you hear, you bring in. Yes. What you surround yourself with, you absorb. Exactly. And that is really hard. Yeah. For people, you know, and if you're not cognitive of what, what is what, and you're not chick chicken with yourself every 10 or 15 minutes. Hey, baby girl, how are you over there? Yeah. You know, if you're on a first date, like everybody's dating on these apps. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, crazy, but, you know, and they're texting. I mean, I have friends that are going through all these texts and one gift and one of the many gifts that God gave to me was I read intentions. I can see it. I can see who someone is through a picture. Right. I can tell you exactly who they are and if they're honest, emotionally available or not. I can tell right. you all about them. I mean, it's really interesting, but not everybody can. And it's hard to determine who is genuine and who isn't, you know, right. now with, you know, and you you're texting and you're wasting your time, energy and effort on someone that may or may not be a positive energy for you. So exactly. we, we owe it to ourselves to be cognitive. And if we're spending our time, energy and effort, um, people that don't honor us the way we honor mm -hmm. them stop giving to those people you know what taught me <laughs> when I divorced and I started doing for me what I was mm -hmm. doing for my ex-husband right I was stunned <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I realized I I opened two new businesses I mean I became unstoppable because what I realized was how much energy I truly had when yeah. it wasn't being tanked by right. him or other people. And I've had to drop and, and fire girlfriends of mine because they were just, they weren't healthy for me. Yeah. I love them unconditionally from a distance. Right. I just can't have them in my life because they they are not positive influences they does not no they're toxic for me and it's like uh drinking a toxin you know every time you go around them it's like you know it's it's rough and you can't yeah. do that to yourself when you're doing that to yourself you have to cut it off I mean you yeah. have to cut the, the head of the snake off and and recenter yourself and work on rebalancing and figure out why you attracted those people because something inside I know that something inside me attracted them so your intention for doing something and your fear go hand mm -hmm. in hand yes. so and so does manifestations so yes. so here Everybody wants to talk about manifestation. So I've got to give you a good one. <laughs> I yeah. got into this one. It's, because it's really fun. I'm playing with this now with some friends of mine. And it's it, I, when I say playing with it, I'm teaching them some things because I have, I manifested me. Right. I literally manifested this person in, in my life. I wasn't always Juniper Jillian Joy. I used to be Tammy Shannon, but Tammy Shannon had to die for me to live. Right. And was I manifested this life for me because I wasn't I wasn't going to accept anything less than what I deserved anymore. Not even that's from my good. children, and that's the truth. I mean, our children, as much as we love them, our grown children will. Our children will abuse us as parents if we let them. Right. And I learned the hard way on that. And that's a tough situation. Mm -hmm. But so manifestations really work beautifully. So here's what happens. When we have an intention, we are sending up the smoke signal <laughs> of what we want, what we desire in our life yeah. to be um, the love of our life. Um mm -hmm. Uh, the our dream job, our dream, right. you know, our dream life, 
I call it a lifestyle. Joy yeah. is a lifestyle. You know, oh, it's yeah. why I'm building Joy University right now because we're creating a lifestyle for ourselves. And that lifestyle is manifestation. And the reality is we are manifesting every day. Yes. We are absolutely, we are manifesting. We're either manifesting our fear or we're manifesting mm -hmm. our intention and desire. So right. what we have to do, we have to take our responsibility when we take our responsibility for ourselves. Right. And we say, okay, what is it about me? Because this is what I had to do. I had to dive deep, dark, and ugly. <laughs> I mean, and I to go, okay, baby girl, what is going on over here? Why right. did we attract these people in our life? <laughs> I hired everybody. And you know what I did? I traveled the world and I took 18 months leave of absence from anyone. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to, I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't be lied to. I couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. You know, right. it was pretty significant. And I needed to just function for me and no yeah. one else. my girls were grown and in college and you know busy and now they were the ones I, I spoke to them you know and facetimed and things but it was different and um what was amazing was I was in nature I was right across from a nature preserve which was amazing and I would go out there and I stay in the woods every day mm -hmm. I just go out there and just talk to God and that changed everything for me because nature is our number one healer yes mm -hmm. mother nature is our number one natural healer yes. and so manifestations work exactly the same way as fear we just have to figure out what is that fear that's causing what is the root cause of the fear that's causing me to attract what I intended not to attract, you know, right. it's yeah. like, you know, and, and I'm saying that intentionally incorrectly, <laughs> but it's like, why did I do that? Yeah. Well, once you figure that out, it, it always, always, always has to do with something that happened and experience that your body, your cells mm -hmm. had, had as a child. Yes. And it could have been at your birth. You, you don't even know it, but it's stored in your subconscious. And yes. here's how I know. If you do a test and you have, you put your clock on your phone and you give yourself mm -hmm. 60 seconds, you walk into a room and you say, you look at everything and you come out 60 seconds. And I say, what was the largest picture on the wall? What was it of? And you're like, I don't know. Now, if you take a second and you ask your subconsciousness, you'll know the answer. It's mm -hmm. a powerful test because our subconsciousness is connecting. It's collecting data of everything everywhere around us and right. if we tap into our subconsciousness we know the answers of every problem we have yes and our sub between our subconsciousness and god's guidance in making better decisions mm -hmm. you know yeah uh, it, it really it it is the difference in manifesting your intentions and desires or manifesting your fears right. and causing yourself more anxiety and stress on the body. I mean, it's pretty significant, but we yeah. are manifesting vehicles. So I'm teaching uh, some, <laughs> I'm doing, we're, it's like playing a game. So, and that's, you know, and I'm teaching people how to manifest what they really, really want. Through right. Figuring out, and sometimes it's something so small that it's like the opposite of the grain of a mustard seed, where the faith, if you have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you can right. have it, right? Yes. But here, 
fear is the same way. Fear will keep you from moving forward. It right. will paralyze you. You know, what's happened is over time, we've become so conditioned to believe certain things about ourselves and others and yeah. society in general that we are now and have found out that a lot of the things we've been taught and experienced are, are fraud and their lies, their deceit, their, they were hidden agendas under false pretenses mm -hmm. for greed, you know, for greed. Yes. And they used fear to control us. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, this is what we live with every day. If you turn the news on, it's about, it's fear-based. Everything is fear-based. I don't watch it. I don't want any part of it. I don't want to hear it because yeah. that's not the life I have. And no. I tell people, I mean, you have to, everything you feed yourself, everywhere you go, everything you do, everything you drink, eat. I mean, everything. Yes. You're either feeding yourself healthy fruit that feeds the soul, spirit, body, inner yes. child, and mind, or you're feeding yourself rotten fruit that comes from other people. Because right. I always say, and this is the truth, it's absolute truth, I have found that things that hurt us have never and will never be a part of us. Right. Things feel good to us were always meant and always will be a part of us. Right. And the one thing we can't control is other people, nor do we want to. And right. no one should possess another. No one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and I know I was treated like a possession when I was married and that was hard. Yeah. But no one, no one deserves to be treated that way everyone deserves whatever they desire yeah. and it's really fun to play some games and and uh i do it with different things even the lottery i mean i teach people through things they love like golf i'm like okay put your intention into the ball when you hit it mm -hmm. give it the energy and let's see where it goes you know it's yeah. like you know and it's, it's really an interesting thing, but it depends on what someone is trying to accomplish, especially if they want to be a pro golfer, you know? Right. I mean, you want your desire to come true. Everybody's yeah. desire. I mean, it could be for some people, it could be, hey, I, I just, I want to live in a tiny house mm -hmm. with no distractions. And I want to work from home and be able to, have access to my pool outside and, you know, travel the world and be anywhere I want to be, you know, yes. be debt, debt free where somebody else could be. I want to own houses in different parts of the world, in different countries. And I want to, I want to have multiple businesses and I want to, I want to have my hands in multiple things because I'm multi-talented and faceted and have different interests. So right. and there's, there's, you know, a whole collage of different opportunities in there. But yeah. it's interesting, but because what I've learned about each person that I meet, yeah. mm -hmm. is that when we live in under anxiety and stress, and surround ourselves with people that are just not, you know, in environments that are not healthy for us, yeah. What happens is we are affected in ways that uh, not only affect us, mm -hmm. but keep us from becoming the person we were intended to be. A hundred percent. You know, and we and in when we limit ourselves by not seeking becoming a truth seeker of Right. What, what is, why are we manifesting, you know, these situations, you know, mm -hmm. and these people in our lives? Why are we attracting that? Why aren't we attracting what I want? It's yeah. because something's off, something's off and you got to go back and 
you know, just get into a still place in the bath or in the bed. Yeah. There's no one and say, and, and say to yourself, self, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, sweetheart, what's happened here? Yeah. Is there, and then ask your subconscious, what is it that is causing me to attract or be in, attract this situation? Because what happened to me was I was, I had three relationships that were exactly, they were uh, deceptive. Mm -hmm. um, unfaithful mm -hmm. and uh, dishonest. Right. And, you know, after, you know, and when you're going through this, you know, and it's like, okay, well, what's going on here? There's a reason. If it happens once, you're on your way up. <laughs> yeah. And they caught you passing through. Yes. And it's time to let them go because they can't go any farther with you. They're like, right and like this dangling and you're up here growing and you gotta you you gotta love yourself and them enough to let go so they can go have the life they want without holding yourself back you know exactly. and mm -hmm. you can't hold people back that are going because you want to stay where you are you know what I right. mean so oh, yeah or that you're paralyzed in fear you know what's happened over the years of conditioning is that we have as a people, people have the flight, fight, or freeze doesn't really, it's like, well, the reality is you're, you're like on eggshells or pins and needles, as my mother would say, because you are a fraction away from cracking at any moment. Right. When, when that situation is the case. Does that make sense? Right. It does because make sense. When you're not talking about, if you're not talking about what's bothering you to the people that can make a difference. Right. Seeking help by friends. My biggest mistake, and I, I really feel I need to say this, there's someone out there that needs to hear this. They're in an unhealthy relationship. And dear ones, I want to say to you, if for any reason something doesn't feel right, you can't stay in a situation for money or any other reason. Right. When I was married, um, one of the situations that I had was I was a very successful self-made woman. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem that was what caused him to change and what I realized was he was always that person he was just able to hide it from me until this time was right mm -hmm. and my being successful made him very insecure because yeah. what he wanted was to feel like he was different. And yeah. for me, it was, I thought he should say, baby, I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you, but he couldn't. And the reality is we don't need anyone to say we, they're proud of us. We need to be proud of us. Yes. Especially we women have to stick together. We're not in competition. Look, I don't want your man. I don't mm -hmm. want, I'm not sure. At some point, you know, I will, I, I will date someone and meet someone amazing. But for me to even it be worth my time, effort, and energy, he's going to have to show me who he is. And listen, I don't want anybody's anything. You know what I mean? Oh, I yeah. What is, what is meant for me? And that's right. it. And it's, it's amazing because we women – we set a precedent in our own lives with our spouses and our children right? and our friends. Mm -hmm. And it's up to us 
if we're sitting in a relationship that doesn't feel right or feels stagnant or Mm -hmm. we know or any of the ladies out there that or men that are in a situation and you are doing the work, you're doing the do as the civil method says, you're doing the do. I call it doing the work. But if you're doing your doing for you, Mm -hmm. then everyone in your life benefits from it because everything is good for all. Oh yeah. But when you're not, it really turns into a situation. Oh yeah. You're hearing that negativity over and over and over again. It's like your mind just became a recorder that plays when they're not around. And oh, I know what I I wanted to say this because this is so crucial. One of the things that my ex-husband did to me was this. He consumed my time when I wasn't working, for example. I couldn't even, I could, but it was just awful to go to the grocery store by myself, seriously. And then everything that I did, he would redo. It it was really ridiculous. And you look at that and you think, you know, that's sad. And that's what I, I thought that was sad at first. But over time, what you really begin to see is these are not issues with me. These are issues with them and they need to deal with it. Oh, yeah. But the issue that I want to really get to is something that is happening with a lot. I have girlfriends dealing with this and I have guy friends dealing with this that are dating. And what's happening is I have one of my girlfriends call me and I kept texting her for months. I'm like, hey, sweet girl, how are you? And when I get a hit to check on somebody, something's wrong. I mean, you know, it's like when, you know, yeah, like I knew something was wrong. I could feel it. But she wasn't calling me or texting me back. And then two months later, she called me and she said. This guy. He consumed her time and her sister had an issue and she only has one sister and she had committed to go and be with her sister and he said well I want to see you before you go and she said oh okay well if it works out then that'd be great and he had been great until now and they had seen each other he took her on vacation within the first three months so Mm -hmm. what happens is these people that know that you have a great heart and that you have trauma, if you have, and most people have trauma, so you are a walking target for narcissists, and here's why, if you are not addressing things that are causing you anxiety, you're attracting narcissistic, controlling, abusive people, yes. and these are men and women now, I mean, oh, yeah. seriously, it's horrible, so what she shared with me was this in a nutshell. The first thing they do, I mean, I just started walking her through this and she's like, oh my gosh, I see the pattern now, you know? And I said, you need to not walk away. Don't, I said, don't jog away, run, block him right now because they're just toxic for you. They feed on, people who and they look for people who have trauma yes they do I mean they do they they target them because they have made that their life's mission Mm -hmm. they have no interest in becoming better they're not gonna do the do and do the work and what they want to do is consume your time the first thing they'll do is they want to alienate you from your friends and your family which means all of your time is on them. And they do it in a really sweet way. And here's what happens. They'll say, um, like she was on vacation when I text her and called her, see? Right. It was on vacation with him. And he said to her, "Um, I thought you were going to be present with me here. 
Mm. See, very they sound sweet, yeah. but but it's very manipulative. And here's yeah. what I want to say to everyone that's in a relationship that they're not sure about. Here's what I want to say. There are signs and things to do. If anyone in your life is alienating you from people who truly love you, mm -hmm. your family, your friends, and they're consuming your time, flag. It's a red flag. There are no other flags. Red. Yes. There, it's either go or stop. It's a hard no or a hard yes. Yeah. Right? So that's a big flat red. Do not pass yes. go. Cut it off and get out because yeah. they are going to consume you. And what I know about relationships, if control, time consumption turns into control. Control turns into verbal abuse. And verbal abuse turns into physical abuse over time, yes. period, period, exactly. period. And our children deserve better. Yes. You, all of you deserve better, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that um, I wanted to make sure that I said that was really telling about this guy was that his ex fiance and see these people, you don't know them because they seem very sweet. So here are some signs that if they check all the boxes and everything looks great for 90 days, 90 days, it is the time that you hire employees <laughs> and mm -hmm. they, you get the best out of them for 90 days. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you hit six months, between 90 days and six months, you're starting to see who they really are. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's they're so either, true. They're either going this way or they're going this way, but you never see them go this way. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens. You know, no. it's not like the stock market that goes up. That's not yeah. going to happen. But when you meet them, that is the honeymoon phase. That's the best you're going to get. It gets, yes, it is. Everything goes down from great. there, <laughs> even in friendships, you know. But it's really interesting because if everything they're saying sounds really sweet, like I could say, Stacy, you know, like he's he, he said to her, uh, to my my friend, uh, I won't say her name, but um, yeah. he said to her, um, I I. Why you're on your phone? I thought you were gonna be present with me. See, that right. sounds good, but something about that felt disgenuine to her. I yeah. asked her the first thing I said was, How did that feel when he said that? And she said, Oh. I mean, and she had to take a breath. I said, That's yeah. bad, huh? I said, That's the interesting thing. I said, people that prey on people that have a fear, yeah. their fear is, is bigger than their intention and their desires. They're manifesting, right? So they're manifesting this, you know, the, you know, unhealthy stuff and the rotten fruit that people like this, they're rotten fruit because yeah. they don't want change. They love, yeah. they love the game of it all. And they, what excites them, unfortunately, is taking and controlling someone else. That's, that's where they're, they literally yeah. have joy with it. It's absolutely horrible. I mean, they actually, you know, that's what they live for, you know, yeah. and it's horrible. So if they say all the right things, but, but something in your gut says something's not right, listen to you and not them. Listen yes. to your gut because when something doesn't feel right, it's because something isn't right. Exactly. Believe you over anyone else. When someone says, oh, you're just, you just think that. It's why cheaters accuse you. Are you crazy? Right. 
Right. Um, no, 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 I'm not crazy. You are a liar and you're a cheat. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah. because it all comes out. And that's why 2020, hindsight always, we look at it later and we, people who become victims of those circumstances and situations often have self they self mutilate they self they literally like self sabotage in their mind and it's yeah. and those people have a tendency to i didn't do that but right. i do have and work with people who do and a lot of times they have had issues dealing with addictions Mm-hmm. Like sex addiction, drug addiction, alcohol, gambling, yes. you know, it's, it's one st- extreme to another. So what we're really talking about is the different facets of what happens and the symptoms yeah. and symbols of what happens to people when they are in situations that, you know, uh, are anxious, stressful, um, abusive, traumatizing, yeah. you know, whatever. Um, but there are so many fun things we can do for ourselves. And the number one thing is the first thing we can do is if you want to test, and I've got to say this, because if you want to test <laughs> your relationship, <laughs> say, you know what, baby, I need, I need, I need to take a day for me. I just need Mm -hmm. to take a day for me. And you know what? The people that love you, your husband, your your mate, your partner, your lover, they will be like, oh, no worries, baby. What can I do for you, right? Can I take the kids? Can I, you know, can I take the dog? What do you want me to do? You know, Mm -hmm. or or I need a vacation just for me. I just need to shut the world out. Right. You know, and if they are too insecure for you to go, something's wrong. Right. If they have a problem with it, something's wrong. You better check, check and tap, yeah. tap. Mm-hmm. Because start asking questions about what, why they feel the way they feel. And maybe you can help them get to the root of those who want to. But yeah. those who don't, you've got to make a choice. Are you going to stay in that situation? Are you going to, you know, but it's up to us to choose what we, what we want. And I want to manifest my desires and that, and that's what we, that's hopefully what everybody wants to do, but we have to understand that we are manifesting every second of every day. We're either manifesting our fears yeah, manifesting our intentions and desires. And that is the power to truth right there. Yeah, that's amazing. Now you have a book. I want you to tell everybody a little about your book and where they can find that book. Okay. It's called The First Story of Intentions and it's subtitled The Introduction to the Inner Child because there's so many questions and the inner child is the most misunderstood part of us. Yes. What God has shared with me is that the inner child is his is the a little tiny seed and part of God. It's God's spirit. Yeah. In us that we can grow and cultivate within us that grows our own self-love that exudes out of us. Right. To become you know, love doesn't come from outside of us, but it, everything comes from within us. Happiness, joy, peace, love, and joy come from within us, not yeah. outside of us. And no one can give it to us and no one can take it away. Yeah. We let them take it away, but they can't if we don't let them, see? Exactly. Give it to them or allow it, see? There's that word again. So the first story of intentions is, when I first started writing, I really thought I was writing a child's book, you know? And then I realized when I got to some of the characters. So as I was traveling for seven years, healing every part of myself, like I said, I couldn't sit still. 
and work at a computer for more than 15 minutes. My right. trauma was so significant from all the negativity of my marriage mm-hmm. that, and the trauma that I was experiencing every day. Yeah. That I, my mind, I literally, I was bombarded and I was, it, it was overpowering. And I, my ADD really kicked in to where, and I had to go get on medication for it because I could not sit still. Right. And then I really didn't like the medication. And then I started really playing around with my, you know, ways to do it and traveling the world, studying the mind, the body, the emotions, the yeah. nerve system, you know, how everything works, how complex we are, yet how, you know, how everything works together and how yeah. you know, balance takes place. And it was really fascinating and very eye opening because I studied under the most brilliant minds in the world. And the United States does not study holistic health because it's all about money and greed, you know, really. Yeah where every other country studies it because they truly want to heal people. Yeah. And that's where I went. And I went, you know, it was amazing, really. And along my journey, while I was healing me, I was, people were sharing their amazing stories with me. And I learned to be open, intimate, and vulnerable with myself. And my mm-hmm. book is completely open, vulnerable, and intimate. It is real life details and experiences of not only mine, but of people in characters that I went back and added because the stories were so compelling. There's yeah. one of the ladies was sold by her parents. Um, one of them, um, was, um, was persecuted because of his skin color, you Mm -hmm. know, one, um, you know, there's a death. I mean, it's, this book is literally one of them had to flee his own country and not all of us will have to flee a country. But we will have to flee a relationship. Yes. We will have to flee a job. We will right. have to flee a situation. You know, we, it's like we are, it is, that book is, it's a roadmap of how to navigate without giving in to anxiety and fear, but how to navigate around through and within ourselves so beautifully that everything flows to us like a magnet in a way so that we can make better decisions when we're under stress and anxiety we can't make good decisions our decisions are toxic for us I mean we marry the wrong people you know when you're in fear about money I have some girlfriends that turn around and married again really quickly, you know, within three years of getting divorced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's terrible because they yeah. were afraid and they married the wrong person and got divorced again. You know, I mean, it's, right. tough. it's really tough situation. So the first story of intentions is literally all of our <laughs> first story of intentions and it's the introduction to our inner child so that we understand what the inner child what role the inner child plays and how important it is right with that inner child connection and communication yes we can take our intentions and our desires and manifest whatever life we desire we right. can heal ourselves and you, you can fall in love with yourself once and for all so much mm-hmm. that you go into court, adopt yourself and change your name like I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I did. It, but it is it is a game changer. It's really yeah. a real life. And it's written like a fantasy fiction fable, but it's 
completely real true stories. I changed their names because mm -hmm. um, to protect, you know, those people. Yeah. But it's it's real people. It's us. It's you. It's me. It's all of us. Right. To a book. And there is an out of everyone. It's been amazing out of everyone that's read it and the feedback that I'm getting and the messages. Yeah. is that they'll say, I'll, I'll, you know, they'll say, I really resonated with Cindy or I resonated with Sarah. Right. What's amazing is by the time, and this, this is when they first begin reading it, and then by the time they get to the end, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like, you know, I have five of them living in me. I said, you do. Mm. You know, you really do. Yeah. It's like, we all that's what empathy is. We we learn from other people's experiences and we use our experiences to help other people. Right. And what I'm hoping is that my daughters don't have the experiences I did. And yes. I'm hoping that the people, your audience don't have, I'm hoping that my book and my talking with you today has helped someone out there right. to be more self-aware and and choose to put themselves first rather 100%. than put someone else, you know, give someone else authority over them to mm -hmm. tell them what's right for them. Cause no one can tell you what's right for you. You only, you know what that is and what was right for your parents and your grandparents probably wasn't even right for them. Right. Exactly. You know I mean? Because they didn't even know what they were talking about. I mean, mine didn't. I mean, right. <laughs> honestly, so I don't, I give no merit to anything anyone says until I research it for me and yes. realize if it's right for me. I do not take on anyone else's problems <laughs> or, <laughs> or issues. And that's what a lot of them are is you, you, when you do what the crowd does a lot of times, the road to, <laughs> self-discovery is lonely for a period but once you get through that period it is bliss forever you right. know but what people don't realize is they're living the life they're living the hard life right now right it's hard right now you're doing you're you're living the worst part right changing it is easy I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful and it's fun and exciting and adventurous. And, you know, it's just, and there's something new that we learn about. I learn about myself every single day yes. through my interactions with other people. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be a little kid or a dog that walks right. by and that pulls their, you know, parent over to me. Because it, yeah. the dog wants me to tell the parent what's wrong with it, that something's right. wrong, you know, and it yeah. knows how to fix it. They're wise. They know. They know us over people. I mean, that, I mean, we need to be more like animals in, in that way and be more yeah. intuitive, be more, more in tune with who we are so right. that we can determine when something's off, we know it immediately. We can we can yeah. tell immediately, oh my gosh, something's off. What is it? What's wrong? You know, yeah. the people that we're attracting into, into us at that point. And, yes. you know, but be careful when you're on your way, raising your vibration. Mm -hmm. You are going to attract people of all kinds, but the reality is we all and and the power of discernment and self-awareness yes. is knowing when to let go exactly knowing yeah. because you don't want to wait until resentment or somebody gets hurt yeah it's, you know you got to know in your heart of hearts when to let go and when I to move on you know yeah there's a hard yeah. stop and and I would say to all of your listeners, the one thing that I would start doing now is to start 
writing down things you don't like because what you don't like is always easier to do. It's easier to mm-hmm. write down right. when, when you're in a state of trauma. If you're in a healthy, wonderful sp- place, write down your healthy boundaries and limitations. Right. So the, what we're really doing here is we're having to come at it from different places because people are in different places and they're yes. going to be in different extremes. So, so everybody could do this. You write down what you know you don't like mm-hmm. and what you know is a deal breaker. Like, yes. you know, don't use foul, don't use foul language. Don't do, you know, there are certain things like, of course, most people, a healthy boundary and limitation is don't lie to me. Don't cheat on me. Don't, right. you know, treat me properly. You know, don't mistreat me. Yeah. Where those should be standard. I mean, that oh, yeah. should be the honor system without saying, but unfortunately, it's not right. People will push our buttons and push us past what we want. If we're not sure where our healthy boundaries and limitations lie. So yes. we owe it to ourselves to seek what. Yes. And the only way to do that is to check, check. How are we Juniper? <laughs> mm-hmm. And tap, tap in when it feels good. And it'd be like, I love that, you know, and yeah, around people that we aspire that are that have everything we want. Like if we want to have a loving marriage and wonderful husband and wife, then be become friends with couples that that mm-hmm. have the have what you see that feels right to you and exactly and, and ask them questions. How do you guys make it work? You know, talk to those people because let me tell you, they're sharing with you. They've overcome because they're still there and they're still right. happy and in love. And 100%. these people can really share some power, some powerful in, enlightenment with you about, you know, and, and you might be like, huh, that's interesting, you know? Yeah. So there's some interesting ways that, We just cannot stand silent. It's like when you see something, say something, Mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you know, something doesn't feel right, do something, you know, take an action so that your inner child and your body knows that you love it. You know, that's an act of self-love right there. When you remove yourself from a situation that doesn't feel right. And put yourself in a situation that does. That's like, hmm, that's good. <laughs> you know, it's just interesting, yeah. isn't it? Oh, but it is. We are very powerful. We are really powerful, and we can do anything we set our minds to. God oh, made us creators of our own life, and God of our own life over us. Where can people find that book? The first story of intentions is on Amazon. Okay, and good. So they can find it on Amazon, either through the name, the title of the book, The First Story of Intentions, or by looking me up, Juniper Jillian Joy. And I'm going to have some more books out there really soon. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. When do you expect those new books to come out? Uh, I Right now, I am finishing one that I started. <laughs> that it's called the foxy lady (laughs) oh excellent because i wanted to use an animal to talk about mental health so she this book is about mental health and how um we can become powerless over our mind if we let things go and the foxy lady (laughs) is a fox (laughs) But it, it's really interesting, but it's a really fun read for any ages three and up that it just kind of goes through uh, and really addresses mental health in a different way than yeah. the first story of intentions. And then I've got um, 
I've got another series that I'm working on that I'm not, I won't disclose right now because my okay. priority, uh, that the, the Foxy lady, um, and I can't, I'm, de I'm debating over which title I'm going to use. So I can't okay. keep doing that, but that's how it kind of comes out, but it's really interesting. And, but it's about mental health. It's, it's, it's a fun way to learn about mental health and how to uh, heal yourself. You know, yeah. it's a really fun, fun way to do it um, through, you know, go from cunning to clarity. <laughs> yeah, I like that. It's really fun. But um, I'm really focused on uh, Joy University and the website will be up really soon. But, Excellent. Yeah, for the first time in my career, I am literally selling everything. My my companies trans, you know, I'm literally transitioning completely to training and and teaching people education about the self and how to heal the mind, the body, and every part. Of, of the self uh, through self-discovery uh, so that they can, everyone can become their why and, yeah. lead, you know, and manifest what they want, uh, their desires. And, um, but so if there's anyone out there in your following that want to reach out to me and get on the early enrollment, they can email me um, or DM me through my social medias and let me know. And then okay. I'll, I'll have someone on my team reach back out to them. Uh, but it's really, this is the first time I've, because I was, I was testing out all of the things that I did for me. Yeah. To see if they would work, you know, on other people. <laughs> you uh -huh. know, uh -huh. are, so after thousands and thousands of people, they've, they've turned out to be extremely proven uh, very powerful, fun ways to clear, you know, and, and get yourself out of your head and back into, you know, your life where you feel like you're in control because you have right. peace of mind. Peace yeah. of mind is the, is the way to control your life. Right. Peace, love and joy, you know, and okay. all three of those, that, that's the trifecta. We all want that, you know, in every way. So it's really fun, but I'm looking to do that so they can email me at uh, author Juniper Jillian Joy at gmail.com. So if they want to personally reach out to me there or through my social medias, that is author Juniper Jillian Joy or Juniper Jillian Joy, either one. Uh, they're both up so they can through Instagram, uh, Facebook and, and TikTok. So they can reach me there and um, get on the early enrollment list. Because um, what I really want to do is help more people where yeah. I was only taking referrals because I really had a limited amount of time and I have just let go and I'm releasing everything and removing all the distractions that keep me from doing what I love most. And that's helping others do what I did in my own life. And manifest yeah. the life they want. I love it. I love <laughs> it. This has been amazing, uh, Jennifer. I I have you've inspired me in so many ways, and all the all the information you provided today was just so inv It's just so valuable. It was just, you know, I really appreciate you coming on the show, and I, I hope well, you do come you. back on the show. You know, when once you have your that. second book, and I would love that. And once you get the university up and everything is going, I really look forward to like hearing more mm -hmm. from you because uh, the information today was just like so valuable, so amazing. And uh, people are definitely, you know, are going to really, you know, um, change from, from the way you think, from your energy, from the methods and from all the tools, techniques and strategies that you've, been, you know, that you've endured and, and created over the course of the years are just amazing and you're an inspiration to me so th thank you so thank much you. well you are an inspiration to me I love your story and thank you so much for the invitation to come on and 
I love it. The time, energy, and the effort that you put into everything that you do. And I really, really, I'm, I'm going to be putting out prayers that God bless you immensely and whatever you decide to do in your life to expand and grow. Hmm? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's been great having you. Thank you. Very much.